Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to my talk on uh, sorting and reporting your dependencies with Gradle. Um, this is a talk that I have uh, put together based on a sort of blog post I wrote about this time last year, funnily enough. Um, it's a subject that I find quite interesting, um, and hopefully you guys will too. So thank you so much for joining me. Um, I'll do the obligatory sort of who am I um, slide first, which is, <laughs> you know, my name's Ed. I am a Pomeranian dad, as you can see. That is my uh, little puppy. Um, I'm a senior Android dev for ASOS. I've recently moved, um, and I now work for ASOS. Um, you can find me tweeting all the time on uh, the handle Spaghetti Code, and all of these resources, including the, the, the slides and eventually the video, are available on my GitHub blog. Um, this is my first talk, so um, I've never, I've, you know, it's an absolute privilege to be able to talk today. Um, so yeah, please bear with. I'm sure I will probably uh, mess this up slightly in one way or another, but um, yeah, thank you so much for joining me and uh, yeah, giving me this opportunity. So first of all, I guess I kind of give you a rough overview of what this talk is and what it isn't. Um, I'm hoping this talk will be a dive into a sort of better dependency management uh, within Gradle. So it'll give you, uh, you all ideas of how to sort of better manage your dependencies. Um, we will touch briefly on some exciting and upcoming Gradle features that will make dependency management easier. As I mentioned, it's my first ever talk. So um, yep, I'm a little bit nervous, a little bit anxious, but it's all good. Um, what this talk is definitely not is not a comprehensive guide on Gradle or the Kotlin DSL. So as uh, you will see throughout my slides, um, all of this will be in sort of groovy code. Um, you can sort of, uh, you can, I guess you can replace a lot of the groovy with the new Kotlin DSL. Um, you just look at the sort of uh, the uh, documentation to make sure that you do it correctly, but the code is essentially equivalent. And um, I'm definitely also not showcasing the only ways to sort your re and report your dependencies. Um, I'd very much uh, welcome you guys to all, you know, go out and uh, find your own ways of doing it and let me know how you're doing it yourselves. Um, I'm simply going to present my favorite ways of doing it. Um, so we will firstly touch on the basics. Uh, so the basics include what a dependency actually is and how we can define them within Gradle. We'll also look at sorting. So how to manage uh, your dependencies when scaling, maybe that sort of a, a, your code base growing or working towards a modular sort of a, um, application. Um, like I said, we'll also look at what the future looks like. In terms of reporting, we'll learn how to keep on top of our dependencies, hopefully, and how to report your dependencies to others. So uh, let's kick off with a really easy question. What is a dependency? I'm pretty sure that if you ask any developer, they will say something along the lines of reusable code in the form of libraries, modules, or components, which is absolutely spot on. That is exactly what a dependency is. However, what is a dependency to an Android developer? I'm pretty sure if uh, any of you have got uh, projects open, you will have something along the lines of this within your build uh, Gradle file. These are pretty much what you will see everywhere. You have a um, dependency block, which is in Groovy, um, is sorry, in Gradle is a, a project. It's the delegate to the dependency handler, which actually um, implements uh, the declaration of dependencies. You have uh, what is called the configuration. Uh, most commonly, we will use things like implementation, API, uh, compile only, um, and yeah, I'm sure there's many others that you can think of. Um, what a configuration is, is um, it represents the scope of a dependency. Uh, and by that, I mean behind the scenes, it forms the inheritance hierarchy of your application. So what that is doing is essentially building the graph of your dependencies within the app. And finally, you have the dependency itself, which is split um, nicely into three components. The three components are the group, the name, and the version. So the group tends to be uh, the library's um, sort of a domain in reverse order. Um, for example, I guess, you, you know, uh, we can think of, you know, multiple ones uh, that we'll know, such as com.google. Um, the name is the name of the library itself. That tends to be the sort of uh, modular name of the library, uh, such as OKHTTP, retrofit, et cetera. And the version is a string of uh, characters that is essentially, you know, defines the version. We can have sort of different strings here, be it, you know, a, 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 an outright version such as 1.2.3. We can have 1.2 with a plus to represent any uh, dependency with starting with one. And uh, there's many other configurations that we can have here. In fact, uh, this sort of long, this sort of string highlighted in red here 
is a really nice shorthand for the following. Um, you can write your dependencies like this, and it will still compile just the same. So in terms of what else can be a dependency, we can have other dependencies as well. We can have uh, sort of three examples here, the first one being a module. Um, by that, to import a module into our um, code, we would simply use the project uh, scope there. Um, to, implement, to add single files, we can use the files. And uh, we can use a whole file tree, which is a whole entire uh, directory, which can also have uh, additional parameters to make sure that we only import of certain files. So in this case, we might import the entire libs directory and all of the jar files within that. So I think that's a very, very quick overview of what a dependency is. Um, but what sort of problems do we face? Um, I think I've tried to. Uh, come up with the four sort of main problems that we face with dependencies in Android. Um, and these are the ones I hope to help you sort of address uh, by the end of this talk. Uh, the first one being version inconsistencies. The second one being non-centralized dependencies. Third being moving to a modular code base. And finally, out of date dependencies. I will talk through each one of these individually um, at the time when we address them. So let's kick that straight off with versioning inconsistencies. So what I mean by versioning inconsistencies is um, having a large sort of build.gradle file, maybe with you know multiple uh, dependencies in, all with uh, very similar um, numbers, very similar versions, um, and which doesn't really scale. So the perfect example would be this. Ex apologies for this sort of example uh, package names and libraries that I've used here. Um, this is quite a common um, problem that I think many developers face, especially you know in code bases that are legacy, in code bases that um, may uh, be new to people, and certainly as beginners in Android, I think many people will define dependencies like this. Um, as you can see here, there is one sort of common denominator: we have all the same version. Um, helpfully. Um, and this is, I think, now by default within Android Studio when you create new projects, we can make use of the extra properties block. The extra properties block exposes your sort of defined properties throughout your project. Um, and this is a really helpful feature that Gradle has. Um, so for example, if we simply uh, define the lib version um, as our own property, we can use uh, string uh, interpolation to um, put this lib version across all of our dependencies. Um, as you can see, it's as simple as just adding uh, the, the dollar sign and your um, variable name in here, and also changing all of the quotes to double quotes. Um, in Gradle, uh, the uh, single quotes are treated as a regular Java string, whereas uh, double quotes are used for string interpolation and actually are um, a groovy string, uh, which I believe is, a, is called a G string. So we have the um, Gradle string here, which will do the string interpolation. Alternatively, we could use a bill of materials, AKA a bomb. And what a bomb is, is a regular Maven dependency, but with additional metadata that defines explicit versions for all its dependencies, whether it be direct dependencies or transitive dependencies. Um, I think the most common example of this that you may well have seen in uh, in your own project or elsewhere is uh, the Firebase bomb. So what this essentially does is create a catalog of um, dependencies um, which you can import into your project. Um, it's as simple as using this uh, implementation platform line um, to include uh, everything within the bomb. Um, it, it doesn't actually add those dependencies into your project until you add the uh, implementation or sorry the actual explicit um uh, dependency so for example in these two lines at the bottom uh, you can see that i've added the firebase authentication and firebase firestore libraries um the really cool thing about this is because we are using a bill of materials uh, which again is a catalog of dependencies with explicit versions i don't need to i don't need to actually put the version for firebase or for firebase firestore anymore because this is uh, all handled by the bomb so it's as, if i want the latest version of all my firebase libraries i can simply update the bomb um i think uh, the good thing about bombs is that they are readily available for things like Firebase, for Kotlin, for OKHttp, OK, Jackson, and JUnit. However, there isn't really that much else for Android yet. Um, I think we all need to keep an eye and open some issues uh, because Bill of Materials is a really helpful um, 
really helpful uh, tool that allows us to make sure that our versioning is sort of consistent um, across uh, across the app. Um, I know that there's open issues for Dagger, and if there's anyone else listening who can think of anything else that a bill of materials would work nicely for, then please do raise an issue with uh, the relevant people because bombs are awesome. Next up, um, I'm going to try and address two issues. Um, the two issues uh, are sort of uh, into, so kind of similar. Um, we often face ourselves uh, finding ourselves sort of with non-centralized dependencies, and what I mean by that is um, copying and pasting dependency code across multiple modules. Um, it's a pain, we hate it, it's not fun. And when we are moving to a modular code base, uh, we want a sort of single uh, area of access for our dependencies to be defined. Um, <laughs> I, must, I must warn everybody, like I said at the start of the talk, there are thousands of ways to do this. Um, I will kind of talk through my favorite way of doing this. It certainly isn't the only way, and there's certainly probably better ways. Um, if you can think of any other ways of doing this or let me know of any better ways of doing it, um, please do mention them. Please do tweet me. Please do um, let me know because, uh, like I say, there are a million ways of doing this. So the first thing I tend to do is I tend to create a um, centralized versions.gradle file. And the very first thing I will do is define a um, an extra parameter that allows uh, a sort of empty map. So in, in Groovy, um, this sort of uh, weird robot looking uh, syntax is a empty map. It's an empty key value pair. Um, and I will define um, this will be exposed to my application um, throughout, uh, yeah, throughout my project. Once I've um, implemented that, I will also uh, use two sort of. Um, def I will define two variables. Um, the def keyword here is a um, represents a variable with local scope. Um, I guess you can think of it as having a variable with sort of private access in Kotlin or Java, um, whereas the ext um, you can sort of think as public, um, if that helps. So yeah, the def uh, versions and def dependencies here are two uh, variables with local scope, which I can then add uh, in a sort of key value pair um, the different versions and different dependencies. So the first thing I will do um, at the top here is I will define um, all my versions for, for example, Android X. Um, again, there's multiple ways you can do this. Um, the way I've chosen to do this in this example is to uh, create a map, a key value map or called Android X version, um, and then have within that map set the key app compat and the value 1.0.2. So as you can see, I'm sort of adding to adding uh, dependencies as I go, adding versions as I go, and then reassigning uh, my original um, my original map with uh, with the new sort of defined Android X versions. Um, the same applies for uh, the dependencies. The dependencies uh, in this example, I'm using a string interpolation again with the double quotes to use the previously defined version to essentially um, make this a make this the source of truth for uh, this particular dependency. So this particular dependency app compat will always use uh, the version defined above. Um, once I've done with that, right at the bottom of the screen here, we can see that I re I reuse this extra properties uh, function to to add uh, the depths and the versions, so these are visible throughout my application. Um, I can then apply this uh, this new versions file in my um, app level build.gradle file, and magically, uh, without actually doing an awful lot. I have a much cleaner, much nicer, and centralized um, way of adding dependencies to my application. Um, no longer am I defining specific versions uh, per module. Um, it's a single source of truth, um, which is, goes throughout the application. But this kind of uh, <laughs> this is nice. But when you have an application with a large number of dependencies, what if I want to import all of the dependencies for X? So X might be all of the dependencies for uh, my network layer, all of the dependencies for Android X, all of the dependencies for testing. Um, we don't really want to copy and paste the. Uh, we don't really want to copy and paste all of the um, implementations here. Uh, we want to do that in a really neat way. Um, and uh, yeah, I found this trick um, a little while ago, um, and I've previously written about this, as I mentioned in the blog. Um, within uh, 
Groovy, we have uh, the idea of closures. And closures um, have something called a delegate. And in this case, the delegate refers to um, a third party object where methods and calls and properties are resolved. Um, so what we can actually do is we can define a um, define a method called group, which takes in a closure um, and actually runs that code as if it was in the dependency block that we've previously used. Um, you might say, well, why is this interesting? Why, what does this actually do? Well, in practice, what this allows us to do is something quite interesting. We can we can actually add um, we can create a uh, Within our versions.gradle file, we can actually expose, um, we can create new objects, uh, for example, Android X, and we can actually add um, implementations and the, the, the previously defined dependencies within these groups. Um, so in this example, I've created the Android X group. I'm adding multiple uh, Android X uh, dependencies. I'm defining the configuration here. So in the configuration, as I mentioned previously, is in this case, it's implementation. But this could be, you know, if we're using annotation processing, if we're using um, other, you know, other configurations, we can define this in this group. Um, and what this what this allows us to do is actually turn our dependencies from um, being quite a mess to simply being as simple as calling Android X as if it was a uh, as if it was a method, um, which uh, when I first realised that you could do this, it was was a bit of a sort of mind blown uh, sort of eye opening experience. It really um, allows us to um, really allows us to um, shorten and definitely clean up our dependencies within our app. Um, but this is all still uh, you know this is all still being defined. Um, Sort of as a custom uh, addition to my project, um, it'd be really, really nice if uh, Gradle could support something similar to this out of the box. Um, well, I've got good news for you. That exists as of April. As of April uh, this year, we and version uh, seven point zero of Gradle, uh, we have something called version catalogs. Um, version catalogs do exactly what I've said that they do. They provide centralized dependencies, um, so we can configure our dependencies uh, in a very similar way to the way we've just looked at. Um, it generates type-safe accessors. So um, in theory, we have uh, we have the ability to auto-complete and make sure that we are get, you know correctly um, assigning uh, our variable names. Um, but it does require a feature preview to be enabled. So it's uh, it's it's there, but it's sort of hidden behind a feature preview for now. Um, so what does a version catalog look like? Well, there's kind of two ways you can uh, define a version catalog, one in Gradle and another way we will talk about shortly. Um, but let's look at the Gradle way first. So if we uh, define within our settings.gradle um, this block here, um, the dependency resolution management block, um, you can see um, that we can define dependencies. So for example, um, in this version catalog, um, I'm defining the OK HTTP version, which is defined by this little version method here, uh, which is the version uh, with the 4.9.1 in it. Um, and we have this quite nice uh, sort of builder syntax where we can create an alias. Um, so in this case, I will use OK HTTP core. I can specify uh, what the alias is for. So in this case, the first part is the uh, the group um, that we defined previously. And OK, HTTP here is the name. And we also have uh, the version ref. So the version ref here refers to the version that you can see above. So you can imagine um, having a very similar sort of layout to the one uh, that I previously defined um, when we were you know, defining our own custom um, implementation of this, uh, having a long list of versions and then a long list of aliases. Um, and with this dependency uh, resolution management block, what the output of this at the bottom of the screen is 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 truly remarkable. We 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 can we can use dependencies um, and simply call libs dot okhttp.core. Um, it the alias is actually converts the dashes to dots. So we have this really nice syntax. Um, so if we wanted, you know, multiple HTTP dependencies, we could have okhttp core, we could have okhttp websocket, we could have the logging interceptor. And all of this would be, you know, handled by the dependency resolution management and the version catalog um, to give us type safe accesses to them. Um, and I think that's crazy. This is this is a feature that I think has been long needed. Um, 
it's, I was really excited to tell everyone about this. I'm hoping that this, uh, for a lot of people, this is uh, your first time kind of hearing about this. Um, but if it's not, great. I'm hoping that we can use it uh, all very, very soon. Um, I did mention that this is one way of uh, one way of defining uh, these uh, these Hirschian catalogs. The other one is using uh, Tommel. Um, now, some people might know what Tommel is. Other people might not. Tommel, um, per, simply put, is a better version of YAML. Um, if you're aware of YAML, um, you'll know the sort of pains with it. Uh, Tommel is, uh, I think, a uh, a language uh, that was sort of defined. Uh, based on the back of the pinch points and pains of YAML. So um, a TOML file uh, looks sort of similar to what we have on screen now. Um, again, this is a very, very similar to uh, the sort of previous slide where we will have looked at the Gradle implementation. I just wanted to sort of give you another overview of how we might define this. So um, to use this, you would actually use, uh, you'd actually place this uh, libs.versions.toml file in your Gradle folder. And um, you can use this as a configuration, and and this is really this is really great because this um, you know we can define these uh, define these uh, files. They can be shared. I, you could use them. You could even generate them with CI. You could generate them with whatever. Toml is a great format, and you should definitely consider using uh, this particular implementation of version catalogs. Um, again, at the bottom of the screen, this is exactly what it'll uh, output. It'll output exactly the same as uh, the version catalog did with Gradle. Um, one thing that I didn't mention um, you can also do here, which is really, really cool, is um, very similar to what I did with groups previously in um, my implementation. Um, you can define what's called a bundle. So in this case, uh, I've got the OKHTTP OK core and OKHTTP OK WebSocket um, implementations here. Um, and I can bundle them together within a bundle uh, sort of block um, within the TOML file. Uh, again, you can also do this in Gradle. Um, and uh, Simply put, you when you call dependencies, uh, your dependencies block, you have a type safe accessor to all of your OK, T OK HTTP bundles. So again, you could group all of your Android X, you could group all of your Kotlin, you could group all of whatever you want uh, through the use of bundles. Um, so I think this is a really exciting development. Um, I'd say watch this space. Uh, I don't really know. I, I've not seen it um, in any projects out in the wild just yet. Um, it's, like I say, fairly uh, cutting edge. It's been around since April. Um, maybe give it a go. I'm definitely going to be giving it a try after this. Um, I have played with it a little bit. But yeah, maybe uh, this is the way to go forwards. Um, and yeah, wow, I've, I've, I've already um, managed to get to uh, the last sort of problem we face, which may well be out of uh, out of date dependencies. Um, and to talk about out-of-date dependencies, I want to uh, actually do a bit of a story time. Um, so in a previous life, um, before I worked at ASOS, I worked at a digital agency. Um, and one day, I had a project manager come to me and say pretty much the following. I need you to present the app's outdated dependencies and their latest versions available. And I thought, great. OK, I can do that. That sounds uh, sounds interesting. I think I, I think I know a few ways that I can present uh, all of my app's uh, dependencies. Um, so yeah, maybe I can just filter out the ones that are uh, that aren't that aren't uh, sort of the latest version. Uh, and then <laughs> and then the project manager came back to me with uh, the sort of killing killer blow in a way that the client can understand. And that, uh, uh, how do we do it in a way that the client can understand? Well, how do we actually report what dependencies our app uses? I mean, we could look at the build.gradle file, but does that give us a real clear picture? Um, it only tells us what we're actually explicitly importing. It doesn't talk about transitive de um, dependencies or anything uh, in that sort of manner. So what do we have available? Well, the first thing we have available um, within Gradle is the dependencies task. So we have uh, the, the definition is as, as above. You would choose your module and the dependencies flag. Um, sorry, the dependencies task. You would be able to output all of the dependencies for all of your configurations. Um, I mean, that shows all the dependency versions in a pretty tree view. So let's say that we were to run this on a module. Uh, and a sample output of this might be something similar. So here you can see a nice tree view of um, a sample application I wrote and its dependencies. Um, this is quite, uh, it might be quite difficult to look at, but some interesting, we see some interesting things here. For example, we see um, dependencies that are resolved from one version um, to another. Um, and this is an interesting, uh, something that's quite interesting within Android is that when you import 
dependencies, their versions can change. You might be wanting to import version one of a particular library, but if another library has a dependency on a later version, then your definition may be overwritten. Um, using the dependencies Gradle task, it's not always clear what's going on. So I thoroughly recommend making use of the scan, uh, the scan flag. Um, Hopefully you are, you are aware of the scan flag, what scan does. Um, you can add this, uh, this flag to any Gradle, uh, any Gradle task. And what will happen is um, a report will be uh, generated by, the, um, by Gradle and will create a version of this report you can view online. So within the uh, scan sort of functionality, uh, we can, you know, once, once you've accepted the terms and conditions and you've visited your web page uh, that shows your um, shows the results of your scan, we can actually then begin to see why the dependencies are changing versions. Um, this is sort of a, yeah, this is sort of a good way of doing it. It is can be quite overwhelming. Um, and yeah, it's not always uh, very accessible. You don't really want to be creating a scan every single time. So what can we do to sort of get this information um, locally? Um, the answer is the dependency insight report uh, the dependency insight report is another um, is another Gradle task that should be available to all projects. Um, again, you you specify the specific module you want to run it on, you specify a configuration, and you specify the dependency you want it to run on. Um, this again gives further diagnostics on how the, your dependency is used. It shows the constraints that we have just discussed, and also um, sort of definitely requires a configuration and dependency flag. So please do make sure that you add those, otherwise it won't work. So a good example of this might be um, using the uh, insight report to see the core KTX uh, example that I gave previously. Um, why this is uh, why this is uh, this is an example output. So this is why um, the if you look at the bottom, it's, it gives you the selection reasons of why this version has been selected. Um, but it's not always clear, and sometimes uh, sometimes we want to be more explicit about why we are keeping a dependency at a specific version. Um, and this is a really cool insight that I, I wasn't aware of until f fairly recently, is that within uh, the dependency insight report, we can actually add um, to our dependencies reasons of why we are you know, using a particular version of a dependency. So to do this, you would use uh, your implementation as per normal. Um, uh, sorry, your, that would be your configuration as normal. Um, but you would surround the uh, dependency with brackets, open a closure, and add the because uh, the because method. So here we are specifying um, a specific string, which can be then seen in the dependency insight report um, if it's run. So for example, if we run the dependency insight report with this because, um, you can see at the top here um, the selection reason um, is added. So in this case, I just needed a good example to show you all. Um, so th this was kind of going back to the story. This was kind of the route I was taking. Um, I spent many hours going through, uh, you know, command line uh, flags and command line um, Gradle tasks to try and work out the best way of um, displaying my, my app's dependencies and then sort of working out how I was going to sort of show them being outdated. Um, I kind of uh, I, I met in. I had checked in with my project manager, and they were slightly frustrated and reminded me that this needs to be in a way the client can understand. Um, so it was back to the drawing board. We need a way of reporting dependencies in a in in, in a sort of a, in a easy to consume manner. Um, so what I found um, was actually a plugin um, by Ben Mains. Uh, it's called the Gradle Version Plugin. Um, what this plugin does is it generates a Gradle task called dependency updates, um, and it allows you to display a report of all of your project's dependencies. Um, it shows the ones that are out, up to date, out of date, and ones that could not be resolved. It shows basically a beautiful version of all of your dependencies. Um, it allows for reports in HTML, XML, and JSON, and even better, it allows you to customize uh, reporting. So. Um, the base output of this isn't very exciting. Um, if you run the Gradle task, um, you will see something along these lines. You will see it's very similar to what we output with the uh, dependency um, dependency Gradle task, um, but in slightly nicer language and with uh, happy sort of uh, hyperlinks everywhere. Um, so what I uh, used this uh, plugin to do 
with some custom reporting with Groovy's HTML builder. So Groovy has got a really great HTML builder. It's very similar to the one Kotlin uh, ships with. It's a DSL kind of style, um, and it can be used to generate uh, custom HTML pages uh, really, really easy. Um, it's super beginner friendly. It's, um, you know, I definitely recommend uh, giving it a go. Um, and on the right hand side of the screen here, you can see how you would define a custom report for uh, Ben Main's uh, his uh, his his plugin. And 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 again, this is a few lines of code to to output something that can be um, sent to the client in quite a nice manner. Um, I gave it a good go. Uh, in my first attempt, my first attempt looked a bit like this. Um, my first attempt is open source. You are more than welcome to try and uh, try this out on your own projects. Um, please do check out after this talk uh, my website. Um, you should be able to find an example, uh, albeit a, quite an old example, of how to generate these reports. Um, and very recently at ASOS, I actually had the chance to redo this. Um, and I used Bootstrap, and actually, I think I did a little bit of a better job. Um, so you can see the sort of information that we are able to get through this plugin. For example, um, this is a list of all of the outdated dependencies uh, for a particular module within our app. Uh, we have the current version, the latest version with hyperlinks going to uh, the uh, Maven repository to make sure that uh, they are where they say they are. And we also have the project URLs. Uh, so should we want to find more information about the particular dependency that is out of date? Um, and this is the type of thing you guys can create. Just, it's really easy. I will be perfectly honest. This took me, I think, about four to five hours to do. Um, I'm, I'm not a web developer. I must admit, I've never used Bootstrap before, so it was it was a bit of a bit of a uphill battle. But um, we got there in the end. And um, yeah, I highly recommend uh, using this as a tool um, to report your dependencies to all clients, to uh, managers, to non-techie people. I think this is a really useful plugin. Um, and with that, I'm hoping I've uh, kind of crossed off the last uh, last common problem that we face. So in summary, I guess, when possible, we want to centralize and generalize our dependencies. Um, certainly, we want to consider version catalogs in the future. Um, we definitely want to use dependency insight tasks uh, for more info, should we need more information on how our uh, dependencies are resolving. And if in doubt, when you need to report, use the Gradle version plugin. I think that's it. Thanks so much for watching. That was amazing. I've really enjoyed uh, having the chance to speak to you today. As I said, all of my resources and links are available on my website. Um, please do reach out. I know that there's a million ways of doing this in uh, in Gradle and certainly uh, in the Kotlin DSL. If you've got any great examples, please let me know. I'm quite happy to tweet them out and uh, give you the exposure you deserve. And yeah, thank you so much for having me. I think that's it. Question and answers to follow. Brilliant. Sweet. All right. That was a fantastic start to your speaking career, Ed. That was... Thank you. I don't know if it, I, I'm absolutely uh, exhausted. That was uh, the uh, hardest 30 minutes of my life. <laughs> well, um, thank you for donating that to all of us here. No, absolutely. Um, all right, folks, we're going to give you a couple minutes to write in some questions in case anybody has some more. Also, upvote ones that you think are good or that kind of click with you. Um, uh, Ramesh, you're, yeah, okay. Those aren't questions, but it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, Ed, how do you feel about the first talk now? So, like, it was tiring, yeah. No, it was great. It was really it was really interesting. Um, like I said, this is a sort of to topic that I've touched on before in a blog post, um, and I really wanted to expose some of the, some of the new features to uh, the, the community. I'm hoping that a lot of, uh, a lot of people on the talk and, and listening in won't have heard about things like version catalogs. Mm. Um, I'm sure that everyone is probably managing their dependencies in one way or another. Um, if you're a beginner and this is your first sort of uh, first sort of in dip, dipping your toe into this sort of dependency management, then I'm hoping there's something you, you can all take away. Um, but certainly I think, uh, yeah, the future's pretty bright for dependency management uh, with Gradle. So, yeah, everyone keep their uh, eyes on uh, version catalogs, and um, maybe in five years' time, we'll all be laughing that we did our ways. Uh, you know, the sort of examples that I 
set out in this and this talk will be uh, hopefully uh, the starting point for a lot of people um, in, the, in going forwards uh, in a new um, era of dependency management. Nice, very optimistic. <laughs> um, okay, it seems like we have one question, but it's a it's a good one uh, from Martin. Cool. So the question is, we tried using bombs inside our library, but apparently our clients couldn't consume transitive dependencies like that. Do you know anything about that problem? Um, the short answer to that is no, I'm afraid I don't know anything about that problem. Um, I think bombs are, in theory, uh, a really great idea, um, but there must, I, I'm, I, as like I mentioned in my slides, not many, there doesn't seem to have been a massive uptake of them. Um, and I don't know why that is. It could be well for the reason that you've uh, you've mentioned, but it's uh, it's a real shame because if when they work, they work absolutely flawlessly. Um, I think Firebase Bomb has been a has been a great asset to um, developers everywhere. And you know, I think the majority of us, if we're not using the Firebase Bomb, should be. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's uh, I've not personally come across that issue, so I'm afraid I don't really have any more insight on that. Cool. Uh, all right. Anybody else have questions? If not, we can head over to the tables and Ed, if you still have time, uh, anybody can have conversation with you about uh, the talk and, you know, yeah, does that work? Right. Sounds, sounds Excellent. All right, guys. Cheers. Thank you, Ed, so much. That was wonderful. And uh, congratulations on your, uh, on the start to your speaking career. We, we, <laughs> cheers.